welcome once again to the Forward Compatible Podcast. This is episode 104, part two. Part two, part two, part two. You know what Doug have always wanted to say? No. What will you say, part one, part two? What part comes before part B? Part A. Part A! Oh, part a. look at you. Come on, it's an old He's got show. jokes, he's got <laughs> jokes. Uh... This course uh, is part two. In the event you have yet to do so, please do pause the video or click out afterwards. really doesn't matter for part one, where we do discuss this week's news as well as answer the viewers' burning questions. This is part two, where we do... Tony's Topic of the Week. Hi, Jason. All right. Hi, I'm, Brian. I'm doing uh, homework. Lee, Lee? Um, yeah. Uh, we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to do uh, our one of our, I think our first ever top five. We may have done something similar in the past. But, We've um, done something similar. We're this. going to do uh, our top five 8-bit games of all time. Uh, we're going to start with number five. We're going to kind of go down the list one at a time, talk about them, explain why we like them. Go from there and see how the show so turns out this week. Uh Brian, you want to kick us off, sir? I will kick you off with a classic uh, that is actually currently being remade, or not remade, but a sequel is coming out for it. Uh, and it was the basis for much of Scott Pilgrim, the game, River City Ransom. Mmm, good one. Why'd you like it so much? Well, uh, it was a nice combination of beat-em-up plus a little bit of RPG. Uh, as, as far as I can recall, it's the first beat-em-up that had RPG elements. So you would beat up your enemies, take their money, and then use their money to buy skills and food to make your character stronger. Just a really interesting concept. Well, I love leveling up. Yeah. Good games. A very, very, very good game. And a great plot. Just a ridiculous plot. Like, these schools are such bitter rivals that they're kidnapping people from the other school. It's ridiculous. Come on, Japan. Does that really happen? I don't think so. Yeah. But it's a lot of fun. They give us the time. Rival schools? United by fate, Yeah. <laughs> So that was quick, I guess. My turn, yeah? Yeah. All right. Uh, my number five. Uh, little known game with an awesome soundtrack. Uh, main character is named Jason. Not the game that you're thinking of. Uh, but oh, uh, Blaster Master. Mm -hmm. It's about a boy and his frog. Mm. Frog jumps down a hole. Boy goes after frog. Lands on some nuclear radiation. Finds a suit. Finds a as tank. As happens. A tank, you know. And is off on an adventure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think... And I, I just recently repurchased this on my 2DS. I don't think I ever beat it. No, it was very hard. Yeah. yeah. But I loved that game. And I remember when I got it. I was <laughs> There was a dude walking down the street mm -hmm. selling NES games. Like, I've beaten I was, four out of my five. Like, sitting there, right? Like, we're sitting there. <laughs> I've beaten all of them. My grandmother was with me. Mm -hmm. She said, is there anything that you want? And I picked it out. And that's that's what I got. What was that game? Blaster Master. And I, I remember the opening used to kind of creep me out, but I still loved it. it really? Doo -doo 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 okay. Just the music. Yeah. And then, like, you know, the frog getting all big and shit. Yeah. There's no, there's no, they're just pictures. You know, there's yeah. no, no text or anything. He's chasing after the frog. Yeah. yeah. And then you dropped into this eerie world. And then I always felt absolutely terrified when you're on the side-scrolling worlds, when mm -hmm. you get out as the little... Oh, you're a little dude, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and just everything's so big, and it's just like... Oh, yeah, everything can, can kill you like, one yeah. hit, and, like, yeah. you can't fucking jump for shit. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. It was just so weird, so creepy. I love that game. There was an interesting glitch in that game. If you threw a grenade at certain enemies mm -hmm. while they were flashing, if you paused the game, they would continue to take damage as long as you had the game paused. Really? It only worked for some bosses, and if you were in the range of the grenade and got hit as well, then you took damage as well and would die. Interesting. It's a quick way to kill some of the bosses. Hmm. I'm gonna have to try that. Mm -hmm. You sneak. I still have it. It's it's. It's in that stack there. Yeah, it's in the stack. Fester's Quest kind of reminds me of Blaster Master a little bit. I absolutely love Fester's Quest. Also, it's such a <laughs> fucking broken game. It's fun, but it's so broken. I hated the going into the sewers. I hated going. Well, I hated the sewers. The best weapon was impossible to kill enemies with. Which the was? bowling ball looking thing? Yeah, the blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yep. what the fuck? It would either hit the ball and stop and be in I think that's I think that's going to be uh, one of the games that I'm going to live stream this week. It's one of the, li uh, the Retro Run lives. I won't do Friday the 13th. It's a terrible game. Well, it's a great game. 
But I won't do that fucking game here by myself. Conceptually, it's great, but it's at just... night because I don't play until like midnight. Mm -hmm. I won't do that game by myself at night. Cause that when he fucking pops out, scares oh, the shit out of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just comes up out of nowhere and comes flying at you. Yeah. What do I do? You can't kill the motherfucker. I need to do. You're in the boat and you're rowing, and he's like a shark. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard. Um. Tony, number five. Number five. Sorry, I'm off the rails. Sorry. I'm gonna start my list off with Contra. Uh To this day, I still consider it one of the. Greatest shooters ever made. Mm -hmm. uh, it brought us weapon power-ups. Uh, the spread gun. The spread gun, which is the most insane thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's. It was also like... Um, it, it, like To me, it brought a cool like idea to the mix of having power-ups that might not actually help. Mm -hmm. Like uh, To me, the laser gun mm -hmm. was a downgrade over your state. Like, if you had a machine gun... Mm -hmm. Like, there was no reason to get the laser gun unless you were on a boss level because it did have a little bit more power. But mm -hmm. uh, the accuracy and the, the how slow it came out, mm -hmm. uh, the projectiles would actually mess me up more than yeah. they would actually help me. Uh, it was like one of the first amazing co-op experiences I've ever had uh, on a home console. Uh, that and a game that's a little bit later on in my list. Uh to me, it's brilliant. I still go back and play at this game, and a side scrolling side sh scrolling shooter uh, has yet to match that lifetime. So that's got to be one of your retro runs, and we got to have you do. Contra. It's one of my all time favorite games. You really more than Contra Three? Yeah. Really? I love Contra, dude. Okay, no, Contra's Contra is good, but Contra Three is just like it's like it's like Contra is like a buddy cop movie, and Contra Three is like a full on action. Mm -hmm. movie. Before we, like get, we get too far, and I forget, but, I want to tell everybody. I want to know. In the comments yeah. on our YouTube, give us your top five. Yeah. Since Moss isn't here, I know he would have a hell of a time picking out five games out mm -hmm. of his massive library, but I want to hear everybody else's. I had a hard time, too. I had a hard yeah. time, too. I mean, I just did mine now. I'm mm -hmm. probably going to regret it the second we stop recording, mm -hmm. some of them. But, I mean, this is just, especially since I've been going through our Retro Run library and cataloging everything, mm -hmm. this is, like, what stood out to me. Yeah. So... Uh, to me, yeah, Contra's a blast. That a lot of it's probably nostalgia, like remembering playing that with my friends uh, back in the day. I only beat it a couple times legitimately without the Konami code, because uh, with the Konami code, you got infinite lives in it. Thirty problem. lives, but it might as well have been infinite. Yeah, you're working. Yeah, whatever the fuck it was, uh, you weren't gonna die thirty times. The game's relatively short, uh, but it's it's actually really hard to do without cheats. To get through that many levels with the the minimal amounts of lives they give you, uh, it's so much fun though. That music's cool. Just those two '80s guys, just Bill and Lance. <laughs> I don't even remember their fucking names. You know, they've recently blue pants and red pants. They've they've recently re-released. <laughs> and, and since we were talking about them, um, they they have the two Contra guys in the statue that they're premiering at Wizard World this year. It's like two hundred fifty dollars. It's a it's an actual like statue of both of them shooting the guns, mm -hmm. and obviously you look at it and it's fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. Mm -hmm. um, they also this past year released um, sideshow. Well, I don't remember what their name are, but they make like uh, dolls. Um, they made Friday. They made my, uh, Jason, but in his the video game outfit. So he had the fucking like greenish mask and the oh, yeah. purple jumpsuit. Yeah, and he glows in the dark. Nice. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, my number four, DuckTales. Mm. It's a heck of a game. It was a very short game, but it had awesome music, and it was it was from that time where Capcom was making these really good licensed games. Um, these days, licensed games starting to pick back up for a long, but for a long time, licensed games were always shit. But yeah. uh, DuckTales is a lot of fun, and the moon is like the best level of like almost any eight bit game I can think of. Mm. Did you revive the HD one? No, because they fucking talk through the whole thing. What you talking about, Willis? They have voice. They have voice actors and like a whole big story landing that's going on through the whole thing. Whereas they gave the game a narrative. Yeah, yeah, the eight bit game had like practically no narrative. There were a couple like screens of text, mm -hmm. like but like nowhere near. Like they they stopped to talk for like fifteen minutes. Oh hey, Lodge Pat, how are you doing? Oh Mister McD, I don't know. I crashed the plane again. Oh, I got to go get some money because I'm. 
greedy. I'm McDonald. I don't care. Kind of speaking of DuckTales, it w- I know you saw it. Uh, uh-huh. It was announced this week they're making a Chippendales Rescue Rangers movie. Mm-hmm. Um, live, Chippendales. Live action CGI Rescue based on the Rangers. 80s cartoon. Fun NES game, Chippendales Rescue Rangers. Yeah. Good multiplayer. Um, which hopefully opens the door to a DuckTales movie. Darkwing Duck Tailspin. Tailspin, motherfuckers. Tailspin was one of the greatest fucking stories ever. And then still to this day, if if you were too young, YouTube the opening song of Tailspin. That is is the catchiest fucking 80s opening (laughs) scene thingy. Like, I can even... I I don't even need a a Gargoyles movie. movie. Gargoyles was cool. Give me fucking Darkwing Duck and Tailspin and and fucking Chip and Dale and... Yeah. Well, did you... uh, did you see how people were comparing the new Cubs mascot to the Kit Cloud Kicker yeah. from uh He looks Tales just like him. He looks just like Kit Cloud Kicker, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a cool thing, he had a little air surfy thingy, that was kinda of fun. Yeah. yeah, I remember that show. Okay. Oh yeah, sorry. We can nostalgia. No, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it that's the point. That's the point. <clears throat> uh, my number four, uh, I first played in the arcade. Um it was uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um I remember vividly where I played it at. Uh, it was a, a bowling alley that, that my mom worked at. And then uh, I absolutely loved that game. I used to get a, a roll of quarters a night <laughs> as a kid for putting away all the bowling balls. Mm-hmm. Like when people were done, just going out to let, putting them back on the rack. Mm-hmm. The owner would give me a roll of quarters and I would, uh, without fail, spend that entire roll of quarters playing uh, Ninja Turtles. The Who's reason this is... Huh? Who's your turtle? Leonardo. Oh. Leonardo. Oh, no. um, the reason that I, I added this to my 8-bit list is because I remember on Christmas getting it for my NES mm-hmm. and, and playing, I mean it looked horrible compared mm-hmm. to the arcade game but I played the living hell out of that game. Uh, I hated levels to it. I hated the original Turtle game on NES with the, as, with the as, as, view, as the, everyone else. The Turtle uh, Van. Yeah. Because which you know, get I, past I still, the I still have and I hated that game so this this was like I mean, yeah, they came out with Manhattan Project and all the other ones, but this was my Turtles game for my, my NES. It was everybody's Turtle yeah. game. That was yeah. the game, sir. Yeah. So oh. that, is, that is my number number four. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly enough, they, they, uh, they re-released it on Xbox Live. Mm-hmm. But it was pulled ago. later. I have it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Tony has it also. Uh, we've played through. Part of, uh, did we beat it? What? Turtles Arcade? Although I don't have it because I don't have an Xbox anymore, but yeah. I had it. I think we did, and then uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You could you could also emulate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's on. It's on there. Okay, it's on there. I uh, there's five thousand games on there, not including the GameCube games. Uh, number four, uh, Mega Man three, and uh, me and Brian might have to get to some bare knuckle boxing here soon, because he disagrees. Uh, I to me to me uh, Mega Man, Mega Man, I is like that's like a man series like the the con- it's got man in the title it's it's gotta be no like that, that's a really like manly series like they I mean they really limit you on what you're able to do and to get through those games takes a lot of patience mm-hmm. once you break the code. You know, you figured it out. But when you were first playing those games, it's a lot of trial and error, a lot of failing. And you slowly start memorizing and figuring it out and getting further and further. And you kind of take different plans of attack and stuff. Um, To me, Mega Man 3 has the best pure mechanics in the series. I think Mega Man 2 had better music. uh, But Mega Man 3 is like... Everything came together. It was like... Everything I love about the series is, like, magnified in Mega Man 3. I don't know. I, I love that game. That's brilliant. It's brilliant stuff. I am more on the Mega Man 2 camp. Hmm. Uh, definitely better music. Oh, yeah. uh, I think that the bosses were, were the more interesting Mega Man 2. Um, the Metal Blade is, like, the de facto Mega Man weapon. And there have been other game, other weapons that have similar functionality. Is cut? Cutsman? Metal Man. Okay. Cutsman had the I, I'm scissors. Never, scissors. I'm never really a big Mega Man. The red guy. The, 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 first one, the first one was really hard. Like, oh. ridiculously hard. The first one's really hard. Um, and there's I no password or saving. You've got to make it through all in one, mm-hmm. one way through. 
Um, you can do it in like 30 minutes. You can yeah, it's short, but it's hard as fuck. But like, you have to be ridiculously pro. To you gotta, yeah, you gotta memorize the whole thing. I don't think I can beat Mega Man 1 right now. Yeah. I'd need like, I'd need like another month to train. Like, it's hard. It, those games are hardcore. Yeah. Montage. <laughs> Gonna need a montage. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just sitting there with a sweatband. Yeah. Um, Mega Man 3 had some really cool stuff. It, it introduced uh, Proto Man and it had Rush. Both very cool. Uh, but I, just, I don't know. Mega Man 2, the story behind Mega Man 2 is so amazing. Mega Man 2 was never going to happen. But all the people who made Mega Man 1 were like, no, we love Mega Man. We're making another one on our own time. And they all did it on their free time. So it took a long time for the game to come out. But it was like, it's such a labor of love and it shows through in the game so much. And if they hadn't done that, there wouldn't be any other Mega Man stuff, more than likely. Yeah. But, I, yeah, I just, the, and the music will forever be stuck in my head from every single level, pretty much. Mega Man's cool, man. It is. It's great. It's good stuff. I mean, I love, even later Mega Mans are also great, but, yeah. Was that, was that, that was your number three? That was my number three. Okay. Um, we can, that was a good segue, though. Good, yeah. like, <clears throat> Um... This one, it came a little bit later, but uh, I, I clarified it with them first before uh, I added it to my list. Um, technically, it's a, I want to say, a Game Boy Color game. I mean, I think you still play them on regular Game Boy. Um, but it was it was 8-bit, uh, which was, uh, I, there's two of them, so I'm just going to combine them together. Uh, there, there's four of them, because there's blue, red... Yellow, the, the originals were original and Game Boy. Green. Um, and that's Pokemon. Um, that's what started it all. Uh, that that's what. I mean, it's it's one of the cornerstones of Nintendo now. It's it's their flagship uh, for their handheld, in my opinion. Um, I've never been a big RPG player, but and even if you don't like Pokemon, like Tony. It's just so easy to pick up and play once you get past that dreadfully long opening. That's ba- you played Fire Red. Um, that was the re-release of Red. Um, so once they kind of take off the training wheels and it's you go. It, it's just it's a really good game and, and learning the the different rock paper scissor elements to it, um, which is kind of hard to tell in other RPGs like. What's you know you, you don't bosses don't necessarily have a class in Final Fantasy, you know it's not like uh, you know this boss is water so I'm fire attack's gonna beat him. It, it added an extra element. Um, and it, oh, it, they they had that in other games, but yeah, but I'm just I mean on the scale that that it is in in Pokemon now is is well, insane. Pokemon every single character has a trait. Yeah, yeah. multiple now. Mm-hmm. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. But uh, again, uh, I could probably sit here and. I'm not going to do it, but I could probably name the original 151 Pokemon. <laughs> um, that's how ingrained that was into me. And that was, uh, the sad part is, is like Pokemon was like the end of my childhood. It was a little bit later, uh, what, 96, Bray? Yeah, sounds like right. that. So, I mean, it's like 12, you know, it's kind of falling out of. the US. Yeah, was it? Okay. Because I remember, I remember yeah. buying it. As, yeah, September thirtieth, nineteen ninety eight. Okay. I was I was in college when I got it. Yeah. And I played I, it like a minute, and then Jay borrowed it from me and never got it back. Stole my copy of Pokemon from a friend, never gave it back to him. That's the kind of guy Jason is. Yeah. He never asked for it back. Like he had blue, mm-hmm. and gave me or like I was like, let me borrow red. Like I mean, it was even to the point where like uh, I had all the original Pokemon trading cards, including. Charizard and somebody stole that from me. Fucking thing's worth like ten grand now. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's um, still or just it wasn't one point? Still is really? still people still play still, it? That card is like super, super rare now. Um but yeah, I mean it, it, it was just uh, it was one of those moments and I'm kind of recapturing some of my Pokemon fandom now. But it was just uh, again, I was never a big RPG player, but something about that kind of caught my attention and, and really hooked me in. Uh, yeah, so some people may not agree that it should be on my 8-bit list, but Pokemon is technically 8-bit. Uh, my number three, I'm going to go with, because we, we, we did have this discussion. Uh, if this doesn't count, it's it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game. But since the 
the Game Boy stuff does count. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm putting Tetris on this. Uh, Tetris is one of the best games ever made. Uh, it's so simple and so brilliant. I mean, I don't know how much I can really talk about it because everybody knows Tetris yeah. and everybody I knows mean, what it is. And if you want to be technical, Tetris was released on NES. I have it. Yeah, no, it's, so. and the Game Boy is 8 bit. No, it's totally 8 bit. Yeah. It absolutely counts. Okay. If you look up the Wikipedia, Game Boy. It is 8 bit. I yeah. looked it up, yeah, it is 8 bit. I just wanted to be sure. I was pretty sure it was 8 bit because I couldn't imagine a 16 bit processor being portable at that point in time. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was 8 bit. It's probably my most played game of all time. Uh, just because of its longevity. Uh, you know, like, I put some hours in some games here and there, but. You know, after that six-month splurge or whatever, you, you're just kind of done with it or with the occasional revisit for nostalgia, but you beat the game and you're done with it again for another couple of years. Uh, Tetris, I've been playing consistency since I was a child, uh, you know, whether it be on phone or a tablet or a console or a handheld or, a, you know, it's it's everywhere. Tetris is everywhere. And uh, I never got tired of it. I never got bored. Uh, um I don't mind some of the, the the changes they make along the lines. I was ask you, yeah. but uh, if you ask me, I'm I'm still a purist. Yeah, uh, I like the original the best. And no long, ghosting. Yeah. No holding your next piece. No yeah. ghosting twenty pieces yeah. coming up. Yeah. 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 Damn so, right. Damn right. Damn fucking right. I'm a. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, I'm an that's the way so. that you got to play it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So, uh, you know, I liked some of the stuff that came along. Like, you know, if you're comparing the, the Game Boy One, like I didn't mind when it went to color at all right. stuff like that was fine uh you know the multiplayer and all that shit it's fine it's cool but as long as the real tetris is still there uh i'm down man so for this level you bring that i got the, the, okay this is I, oh i also want to clarify when i said earlier in the show i've only beaten four out of the five games tetris is the one i haven't beaten. Well, you can't beat tetris and the, i didn't want to spoil anything yeah, earlier right. in the show I honestly don't remember how far I've gotten. I've gotten far. Uh, I, I've played for hours before. Yeah. Like, hours. I, I know that on the Game Boy Color version, which is slightly easier than the original Game Boy version, I've made it past level 30. I can't recall how far past it. It could have been 40, but it may not have been. But I know I've hit at least level 30. On the original Game Boy, at least level 13 or 14. Mm. I got my Game Boy for, for Christmas. I got Tetris game bundled in with it. Mm-hmm. And I got uh, Super Mario Land. Is that what it was? Mm. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, I didn't see my Game Boy for the first three months. Because your mom had it? Because my mom took it. <laughs> um, and for a fact, um, my mom got up to at least 70. She like So much so that um, a family member of ours, going back to talking about the bowling alley, uh, he owned a... Uh, um, uh, vending machine business and they also did arcade mm-hmm. she had them put a Tetris in the bowling alley she could play and so she could play it mm-hmm. and she had a key to fucking free play it mm-hmm. uh, but no for for a fact and, and this has been a, an ongoing <laughs> debate with my my mom and Jay who've mm-hmm. had minimal interactions over the years have you okay but they, they, the they will, one day will clash in Tetris have you ever seen Jay play Tetris mm-hmm. Tony Oh my God, it's a sight to behold. Okay, here's the thing about Jay. Jay can be at level nine plus, like the super fast levels. Pause the game. Do something else. That's hard. For Come me to do. right back and pick back up. You get and not the, fuck yeah. it up. When you Jay stop, can do that. Yeah, it is hard. fucked up. There is something wrong. He, he he can totally do that. It blew my mind. We used to work together. I mean, he, we've all worked with Jay. But Jay and I used to work together, and he would play Tetris at work back in the day when it wouldn't get you in trouble. And he would pause That's it. all he would do. Well, yeah. He would Man pause it, tournament. set it down, go Help do something somebody. else for like five, ten minutes. Come back, pick right back up on high speed. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It would piss me off so much. Never play Tetris with Jay. Never play anything Tetris-like with Jay. Fuck it. Just admit that he's going to beat you and get on, get on with your life. T- Tetris is also um, one of the gold standards uh, with video game testing. Yes. To see um, if it can actually be beneficial to uh, the human brain. And it's mm-hmm. actually been proven. Uh, Tetris will improve your dexterity. It'll mm-hmm. improve your high hand-eye coordination. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can actually uh, become a better problem solver. And uh, As long as you're not playing it on the original Game Boy. 
Why? It's so hard. Do you remember, remember the Game Boy used to? You, I'm just, you had an original Game Boy. It went fucking Years ghost. Years ago, it broke. It, I got wet. It went ghost. Mm-hmm. So as the piece was coming down, it would leave the like the shadow. The trail, the, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. that would fuck up your eyes mm-hmm. really bad. Yeah, no, I I I have one. Of the... Still gonna sue Nintendo. They're the reason I'm supposed to wear glasses. Fucking Virtual Boy. <laughs> Virtual Boys. Yeah. I had a Virtual Boy. I think raped my eyes. I didn't have one. Were you too young for it? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I had one. I, it doesn't does it matter. I mean, that thing was horrible. I think shot... Take take a scanner from work, okay? The the barcode scanner. And shoot it into your eyes. That's, That's what, what a Virtual Boy is. Well, it was reflecting <laughs> once off a mirror. But yeah, it, no, it's really bad for your eyes. And there was Tetris for that. Yes, I didn't have it, but it, there was. Just, oh. I, I had almost every Virtual Boy game. Yeah. In fact, I even had Virtual Boy games that were never released in the U.S. I wound up selling it. I've, years got, later. I've got them on Open EMU. Do you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I. Virtual we got Boy. Virtual Boy games. Virtual Boy. Yeah, I, I had one. I had the Waterworld game. I played. The it's Water on there. World game because there were so few games for the Virtual Boy. I played pretty much every game. So that was your number three. Tetris. Yes. What's your number two, sir? My number two is one of the hardest games ever made, uh, and also one of the coolest, Ninja Gaiden. It's a rough game. I used to be able to play the first couple levels blindfolded. Uh, I played it so much. That game gets so hard and is so unfair as it goes on. Like, the first mini-boss is already ridiculous. No, I wouldn't go that far. The, we, are you, you, no, no, no. But it starts getting really hard about halfway through level two. I would say. Hmm. I think my, my see. I didn't. I I, I had it. Mm-hmm. I acquired uh, a large library of NES games uh, in my teens, mm-hmm. but I want to say the first time I ever played uh, Ninja Gaiden was on Game Gear. Yeah, but that wasn't exactly the same game. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like that. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to remember my. There first are multiple versions of the game. The NES yeah. version was probably the best. Yeah. There was a re-release for the Super NES where it had all three of the Ninja mm-hmm. Gaiden trilogy. It was. I got the Japanese, because I, I didn't know what the hell it was mm-hmm. until I just I copied and pasted it into Google to see what mm-hmm. game it was, and it's like, oh, it's Ninja, okay, because I'm updating all the cover art and everything, right. so. Um, the trick to Ninja Gaiden was to hang on to the jump and slash when you got it. If you had that special art, mm-hmm. you could beat bosses in a couple hits. Okay. Um, because it would hit them multiple times with a single action, mm-hmm. and like for the first boss, if you jumped over him and timed it just right while doing jump and slash, you could kill him in one hit. Same with several other bosses. Uh, so that was the key to beating the game, was to hang on to that jump and slash. The trick was, anytime you jumped and attacked, you would lose skill points or like power points or whatever. Yeah. But if you held down and jumped and pressed the B, then you would not use a jump and slash. Oh. You would use a regular slash instead. Um, hard fucking game. But it was also one of the first games to have really big cinema scenes and have like, the real story be like, the main part. Yes. And like that introduction to me is just like mm-hmm. epic and like, every, yeah. One of my favorite games ever. Nice. I have actually beaten it, and it is not easy to finish. My number two. It's a that's a that's a man's game. That's a man's game. I should have put hair on your chest. <laughs> my number two. And Tony doesn't agree with me. I already know. Um, is Super Mario Brothers three? What do you mean I don't agree with you? That's an awesome game. Because it's not the best Mario game, but it's an awesome game for me. For yeah. for NES is. I, uh, everyone who owned an NES played Mario. Mm-hmm. Um, in my opinion, this one just took that formula and, and improved upon it tenfold. Uh, the overworld, the little mini games, uh, the boss fights, the raccoon tail, I can't pronounce what the fuck, it, Toki Toki, whatever. Tanuki? Yeah, whatever. You know, cats. Meow. <laughs> just get a Titan. Just get a Titan. Um... And as much as I loved the original, it just showed, in my opinion, it showed, and I hated to, I don't know why, I just, well, I know why now, but as a kid, I didn't know why I hated 2 so much. Mm-hmm. But it showed... You don't like 2? No. No. Uh, two's See, great. I didn't like it back in the day, but looking back, I can enjoy it two's now. 2's great. I it was so much it. different, but 2's great. I still hate it. I still hate it. Um, but... Uh, you know that I hated the music too. I um, love to, dude. But <laughs> not too much. Or we're gonna get to Nintendo will pull us. Yeah, um, sure. But it just uh, again it, it showed it showed <laughs> such a a 
stark contrast in what the system could do, in my yes. opinion, from the original to three. It, it, they're, they're nice bookends mm -hmm. when you look at uh, an entire library of NES. Granted, there yeah. were guaranteed there were some better looking games, but mm -hmm. nothing showed a progression like that. Well, and that's digress too much. Do you know why it, there was such a growth on the NES? They had multiple extra process, not necessarily processors on the NES. On the Super NES, they had extra processors on the cartridge. Mm -hmm. But on the NES, they had various, um, they call them memory mappers, okay. and it would allow them to have multiple cartridges inside one cartridge. Mm -hmm. So whereas the original NES was very limited in how much it could address, mm -hmm. they would put these extra mappers inside there so they could say, like, this part of the game's on this portion, this part of the game's on this portion, and then so they could fit more data into that same space. Mm -hmm. And more, even though the NES couldn't address all that information on the cartridge, the mapper inside would point properly to the right mm -hmm. thing, which allowed them to greatly improve the Visuals, games, yeah. which is one of the one things that we miss with, with CDs and downloadable games is you can't increase the power of the hardware through the cartridge. Mm. Interesting stuff. Yeah. I didn't know all that shit. Yeah. Me? Nerd! No. <laughs> <laughs> is it me? Yeah. Number two? Yeah. Uh, the original Legend of Zelda. Uh, this is also one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, Strangely enough, my top five on NES are all probably my top 15, 20 games of all time. Uh, I I mean, we've talked about this this game at great lengths many, many, many a times. Uh, to me, what they did with that game is brilliance. Uh, it opened up so many genres just in that one game. Uh, it's something I'd never seen before. The first time I played it. And I didn't quite even understand it when I was young, like, why I liked it so much. But uh, now that I can step way, way, way back from it, like, you know, five generations, four generations later or whatever, uh, you really, really appreciate what they did and uh, how much they opened up in that game with just, like, the the secrets, the you know, the leveling up, the, the extra art pieces, the... Purchasing the free roaming, the, the it's insane. Mm -hmm. to think what that game contributed to our uh, the hobby as a whole. Uh, the NES in general, a lot of games, you know, it speaks volumes about that console. Like, if it, you know, if it wasn't for the NES, a lot of us wouldn't be into gaming. A lot of us wouldn't. That's why it's a perfect I, episode for Mark to not be here. It's. <laughs> <laughs> It's 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 cool how you look back and like even modern gaming, which I think is better now than it was back then. Uh, I still love retro stuff, but gaming has evolved for the better, if you ask me. And all all the people that are making these these games right now took all that like they all these designers like wouldn't would have been doing something else right now if twenty years ago they weren't playing Zelda and falling in love. You know what I mean? Like, no. they may have not have become game developers. They may not have wanted to open studios and want to do anything if you don't look back at, at the, the brilliance that the NES brought to us. And Legend of Zelda is a shining example of, of what it did. So, it's a brilliant, brilliant game. It is one of the best games of all time. Mm -hmm. uh, very influential. But there's one game that was better. Yeah, that's my top one game. I know already. <laughs> that game is Metro. No, I know yours already. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I know yours too. Is yeah. that cutting you off? Uh, no, 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 no. We didn't get to my number one. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying. And then, like, not cutting off your no, discussion. No, sorry, wait, sorry, wait, sorry. Number one is Metroid. Because <laughs> it took the exploration of Zelda. Don't lie. It's because she gets naked. But she doesn't. With the right um, emulators nowadays. She well, does. that's different. Uh, Metroid was awesome because it was all about exploration. They did, they did a great job of just giving this sense of isolation. Um, there were some trickery in there, you know. There were things that, like, if you didn't experiment, you would never find your way through the game. You would never be able to finish it unless you really played with shit. Um, and a lot of mechanics that we take for granted now are, were first formed in Metroid. And uh, that plus the whole big twist at the end, like, holy crap, that's a woman? Mm. Um... In the original American manual, they actually referred to Samus as a man. And it wasn't until the end of the game that you found out it wasn't a man. Birdo's a dude. That's a, that's a subject of hot debate. Birdo's a dude. Whether Birdo's a dude or not. It depends on what country you're in. Birdo's a dude. Uh, I agree. Nintendo doesn't anymore. Um, I guess in Japan they used non-specific pronouns for oh. the whole thing until the very end. Um, 
Samus is in many ways the first lady of gaming. And she's a total badass. And what has been done to her character since is kind of a travesty. Uh, but Metroid is, without a doubt, on my NES, the, the go-to game for me. I almost would have thrown Goonies 2 in the list because it has a similar style. But Metroid's a better game in every aspect. Yeah, I feel bad with how many amazing NES games I had to leave off my list. Yeah. So do I. Oh, I... Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, you're wrong. Okay. Number one is Legend of Zelda. Um... <laughs> Enough said. This has been episode... No. Um, the, the reason uh, that, that it's number one on, on my list is um, what, what now is an iconic piece of music I remember hearing for the first time as a kid. Mm -hmm. And just that beat and that tone kind of hooked me. Um, but uh, as a kid, uh, my overactive imagination the legend of zelda was really like a choose your own adventure there was no real narrative in there mm -hmm. uh so link was what i wanted him to be you know uh, the character that i that i wanted him to be that played the way that i wanted to um and like yeah not a lot of games had narrative back then like mario you just kind of start off you're jumping on things but this was uh, in my opinion, it was more open. There was more exploration. You really had no sense of what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, but without even giving you uh, dialogue or direction, you still find your way through the game and you, you realize what you're doing and what's going on. Um, also, uh, was it the first game with save features? In the U.S., yes. Yeah. And, In Japan, know, it wasn't released on a cartridge at that, all. That awesome, yeah, it was the... Disk system, system, so it just saved the drive. And, you know, that awesome gold case. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think that's that's why I'm so critical of the Zelda franchise now is because there's way too much, in my opinion, uh, hand-holding and too much narrative. Mm -hmm. um, let me play the game the way that I want to. You, let you, me develop the story. You've been playing a while. Are you sure you don't want to take a break? Yeah, right? Well, let me, let me, um, it's not even that. Like, that, I mean, I, whatever. That, you know, that just pulls me out of the element of the game, mm -hmm. which kind of sucks. Uh, but, like, let me play the adventure the way that I want. You know, let me tell the story the way that I want, not the way that they're forcing me to. That's, that's why that, that one's my number one. Mm. It's a pretty good game. It's a pretty good game. Unfortunately, it's not as good as the actual best 8-bit game. Worse than the franchise. <laughs> Worse than the franchise. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 1. Uh, the second greatest game ever made. Uh, behind Uncharted 2, in case anyone's wondering. Yeah, okay. um, How dare you? Leave. You're fired. <laughs> uh, Super Mario Brothers 1. Wow. What can you say about that game? Uh, it, I've... That is the definition of a system seller. That uh, game, especially in my age bracket, which we're all pretty similar in, uh, is what moved NESs. Uh, that, even more than Zelda, I, I know I was kind of generalizing as NES, uh, but that game, like I was just saying, made so many developers out of people in our age bracket that grew up, went to college to make games now, and are making all these mega franchises we love because of what Mario did. Uh, Mario still to this day cannot be touched on platforming perfection. It's not better than Alice Kid, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I know. Uh, it brought us the power-ups. Uh, it invented warping, uh, which was amazing. Uh, and it tells, without telling too good or too deep of a story, still an amazing story in... Uh, something as a male i know it's sexist and all that other shit but like i looked past all that as a child uh i, I don't know if that spoke more of the times or just me personally but it's always kind of cool thinking you know you got to go help the princess out and save the day and save the world from the the evil whatever you have and in this case bowser uh koopa i i don't know uh to me the mario brothers i mean it introduced uh cool co-op for switching off uh it's essentially the same game over and over but uh it allowed you to do that uh i don't know man i mean it's it's perfect that game is perfect i, I love it i don't i don't know what to say about that game you know i think it's it's really interesting that the, the way that it, it boiled down is 
uh, if you, you look at the three number one picks that we choose, they're all unique, but they all still have the same mm-hmm. elements. Um, and that's that's one of the big aspects that lacks in, in gaming is, you know, again, Mario, what's the narrative other than save the princess? And you don't know that until you get to the first castle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, I don't recall... And you'll have to excuse me. I'm not a huge Metroid fan, but I don't. Don't they? Don't you just start off and go? In the game, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, like, let's let's throw out reading right. manuals and yeah, stuff because yeah, as game, kids, uh, yeah, we may have, but that's not what what you remember. You right. don't remember. Wow, I read that story in the mat. You, you remember the experience, the game. Right. Um, they don't. They don't hold your hand. They don't hold back on on any of them. You know, they, there's no tutorials. There's no. Uh, 30 minute cutscenes to start you off. Um, and it was it was definitely like in my opinion it was like Nintendo at its at its best. To those, me those three like those three franchises. Oh yeah, to me I just look like with Mario the, like not even just the the impact that that physical game had, but I look outside and how much differently my life would be. That is the number one game that I can point to that has everything directly tied to it uh if i never picked up mario i probably wouldn't have gotten into gaming that is responsible for me becoming a gamer me playing a game that entire time me be, uh, being a part of this podcast me meeting jason which introduced me to brian i would have never met him i used to work with jason and the job that i four. worked at him yeah for the job that i worked <laughs> with him at is four. uh is video game related and i wouldn't have actively seeked out that job had it not been for Mario, because I wouldn't have given a shit about video games. So the whole reason I'm here and know these guys and Mark as well. I met Mark through video gaming and four, all you, all you guys who are video game. I'm just yeah, <laughs> and uh, all all these guys that uh, are all you guys that you know I consider our friends that watch the show every week. Like we would have never talked. We would have never had a chance to interact at all. It all directly goes to Mario. Mario's responsible for all of it. I, I don't know, man. And without Mario, I wouldn't have continued gaming, and then yeah, I wouldn't and, have and ever. I, I, can, I wouldn't have ever been able to see Uncharted two. Fuck out of here! Worse than the franchise. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, what if taking the train I, thing twice? I know, I know, I, I know I've talked. <laughs> How lazy is that? I know I've talked about it, but like, uh, my Nintendo helped me learn to to read and and. and Numbers and stuff like that. like I had Elmo's fucking number journey. I remember that game. I had the Sesame Street game. Was that, awesome. That's what I'm talking. That's what that's what it is. It was two of them. Uh, that I because I, I remember because my older cousin wouldn't let me play his Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my mom went and got me my own. Mine came with Rob the Robot. She being the and I'm not trying to like blow smoke, but being the forward thinker that she is, mm-hmm. found a educational game and that would like I. When I first turned on my system, my earliest memory is not Mario, uh, even though I played Mario. But with turning on my own system, it was fucking Sesame Street, because that's what she gave me. Mm-hmm. If I figured out all the problems in Sesame Street, then I could play one of my other games. That's the mm-hmm. way that that worked. So it was like a reward system. Hmm. But yeah, I think uh, I think we got to wrap this up so I can go play some Nintendo games. <laughs> we'll go play some fucking Elmo. Yeah. Yeah. It's like fucking Nintendo, man. Yeah, you go watch your your football. I'm that's why that's why I hurt so much when I see all the the dumb shit nowadays. You know, it's like that's why you're telling you, somebody somebody in the right mind's gonna tell me that if Nintendo didn't put the original Mario on on mobile platform, charge five dollars for it, that that thing wouldn't sell a fucking million units. It would sell. It would sell a ton. It would get complaints. You know, platforming well, problem is, is so bad on touchscreen. Well, yeah, that's why I think platforming sucks on touchscreens. If they were to release an, a controller and give you Mario with it, they'd sell more controllers than iPhones. There we go. Brian's got the idea. Nintendo, you've been listening to us. Come out with your own controller. For the 30 bucks? Yeah. 30 bucks? Good price well, for a controller? I, I think it's a good price, but I don't think so. they'll have to mm-hmm. charge because... Mm-hmm. All that are made for iPhone controllers. Nice they're ninety nine. They could probably they probably could undercut we're, them. Which we're we're gonna undercut mm-hmm. them. We're we're helping Nintendo. They helped us as children. We're helping them now. Now that they're senile. They they could absolutely pull it off. <laughs> they are. They're all a bunch of fucking senile. All right. 
Uh, yeah, let us know your top five games of. I, I want to see a bunch era. of them, and, and if anything, maybe if we get enough of them next week, we'll read them off. I'm curious. I'm curious more because our our viewer base, I think, is a, like slightly younger than us, where they all grew up like on Mark's age. Yeah, they grew up bit, on yeah. the sixteen bit era. Mm-hmm. So I'm more curious, like, because you guys didn't get to experience this stuff firsthand. So like, I'm curious what. If, you know, how many you went back to, how late in life you went back to them, and the impact they had on you guys, because it's got to be different not growing. Like, like when I got the NES, uh, I got the 2600 because my uncle handed it down to me, the Atari, because then he saw I liked video games and he wasn't using it anymore. Uh, so that caused me to go back. And That's I remember I mine too. I remember experience all the 2600 games, but they don't have that same... I love a ton of 2600 games, but they don't have that... Same thing for me because I was already spoiled on the NES. So going back was hard. And I imagine a lot of people who are like four or five years younger than us have that exact same problem yeah. with the SNES going back to the NES and being like, this is pretty, since, this doesn't have any... Since our, our audience may be a little bit younger, uh, one of the aspects, Pokemon may be one of their first introductions, which, mm-hmm. again, technically falls into that category. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, Game Boy games are 8-bit. Yeah. Yeah, so... All right, uh, this has been episode 104, part two. Two year anniversary. Two year anniversary. Holy shit balls. Yeah. We've been doing this a while. Two years a while. It's been a while. Two years a while. It's been a while. All right, thanks. It's been a while. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I guess we'll see you next year, or our third year. Wow. Next year? Really? Our third year. Really? Catch us next week, same time, same place.